Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you every single camera setting I use to get photos like these. If you've seen the channel before, you'll know what setup I use, but people that are new here, I'll go through right now. So for the body, I've got the uh, Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II, and then I've got the Olympus 60mm f2.8 macro, and then flash, I've got the Godox V350O, and then I've got a Cygnus Tech diffuser, which you can buy from Cygnus Tech on Instagram. Um, and then I sometimes use a Rainox, which uh, gives it a little bit more magnification. So yeah, that's my uh, camera setup for macro photography. Uh, now let's get into the settings. So the first thing you wanna do when you pick up your camera is set it to manual. And you do this by choosing the manual mode on the mode dial. And this allows you to customize every single setting in your camera and have full control over the image you take. So if I pick up a camera and it's brand new, I'd usually start by setting the picture mode to normal and setting my shooting style to raw as opposed to JPEG. I choose natural picture style just because I don't want any effect on my image when I take the photo. And then I choose raw because I like to edit my photos in Lightroom and Photoshop later on. And if you're shooting JPEG, it will be more compressed and you won't be able to push the highlights and shadows in your image as much. So shooting in RAW kind of gives you, gives you flexibility when you edit in Lightroom or Photoshop on your PC later on. So white balance also has kind of an effect on the colors and looking for image. And I usually just shoot on white balance flash. So there's a preset which is made for flash photography. Because obviously when I'm doing macro, I'm using this flash and this diffuser. So that seems to work fine really, um, haven't really had any problems with it. Sometimes I might have to tweak it a little bit in Lightroom, but nothing really big of a problem. So another quick thing to mention is colour space. I shoot in sRGB just because my monitor has sRGB integrated into it. Some people might shoot in Adobe RGB because they have a MacBook or something. Yeah, so it's, it's worth giving that a quick Google to kind of see what colour space works for you. On the Olympus cameras, you have like a saturation button and you also have this kind of like tone curve adjustment thing. I keep any of those adjustments to default as I like to adjust those things in Lightroom later on rather than in camera. Now for my aspect ratio, I shoot on 3x2. Uh, this is because it fills most of the frame. I've tried other aspect ratios and I don't fill the screen as much. I've noticed that 3x2 fills the screen the most. And if you're editing, this isn't really a big deal because I actually found out that when you go into Lightroom, you can actually reset the aspect ratio to the default in the camera. Because I shoot on 3x2, I actually have a little bit on the top and bottom that's kind of cropped out. So when I hit reset on the uh, crop function in Lightroom, it opens up the whole image again, so I'll get those top bits back. All right, so now I've got the boring settings out of the way, we'll get onto the more interesting settings. So I'll start with drive mode. Drive mode is basically the FPS of your camera. So I usually shoot on low drive mode, which is 10 FPS on this camera, which is pretty insane to be fair. And usually my flash keeps up with it if I'm shooting on a low power, but, um, Honestly, 10 FPS is way more than I need. So depending on what camera you have, you might have image stabilization on your lens or on your camera body. My lens doesn't have image stabilization, but my camera body does. But even though my camera has it, I usually turn it off. Just because when I'm doing macro, I want to see every single slight adjustment I make. So moving on to the juicy stuff, we've got exposure settings. So when it comes to exposure, I usually begin with the shutter speed. This is because the shutter speed has to comply with the uh, speed of the flash. And it's a bit complicated to explain, but basically if you use a shutter speed over your camera's sync speed with your flash, then you'll start to see like black lines in your frame. So I set my shutter speed to 1 over 250 with my setup. This is because the uh, max shutter speed you can use that syncs to the flash is 1 over 250. Now you might see in a lot of my shots I use 1 over 50 and that's because I'm using a different mode which I'll talk about a little bit later. So the next thing I usually change is my ISO. I usually keep this at 200 at all times as this is the base ISO uh, of the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. I rarely change my ISO. I'll only change it if I get into like a really dark spot and I'm kind of struggling to get some light in my image. 90% of the time I'd say I just keep it on ISO 200 and it works perfectly fine. Now moving on to the aperture, the f-stop you might call it. Now this changes quite a lot. I've realized that kind of anywhere from f4 up to f11 kind of works when doing high magnification focus stacks. Now you might think f4 sounds quite shallow 
but when I'm using the automatic bracketing mode, which I'll talk about a little bit later, it works perfectly fine. But if you don't have that mode or you don't want to use that mode and you just shoot in manual, then I'd say f8 is a great starting point. This aperture seems to be like the sweet spot for most cameras. Aperture is sort of like trial and error really. Depends on what kind of camera you're using, what lens, the aperture will appear different. At the moment, my favorite aperture is probably f5.6. It seems to work quite well for most scenarios um, shooting on this format. It's a great aperture for getting blurry backgrounds when doing focus stacks as well. Now, something that is kind of uh, overlooked in the camera settings is the metering mode. Now, I generally leave it on center weighted, which basically means out of a rectangle, it uses mostly a circle in the middle. When shooting bugs, it's usually the subject in the middle of the frame. So yeah, it's using the most important parts of the image uh, to determine what's exposed properly. And then the last setting that I change when I'm doing my exposure is the uh, flash. So depending on what flash you have, they're usually the same. So what you wanna do is set it to manual, which should be like an M. And this will allow you to change the power of your flash manually. And I usually use anywhere between one over eight to 1 over 64, depending on the scenario. And another setting to consider is the millimeter zoom. So you want this on the lowest setting possible. Uh, this is because what zoom is, is basically how wide your flash fires. So if I have it on 12, which is the lowest on my camera, it will spread as wide as it can go, which means it will cover most of the uh, diffusion panel on my camera. And if I have it on narrow, it will only cover a tiny bit yeah, you want to keep it on the lowest setting possible, so mine is 12. So now I'm going to talk about my focusing settings. It's quite simple really. I shoot everything in manual. All I do to focus is set my magnification. So say I want to shoot a 1 to 1, I'll set my lens to 1 to 1. Or if I want to shoot a 2 to 1, I'll set it to 2 to 1. And then once I've set my magnification, I'll eye up my subject. So pretend my finger's the subject. And then I'll just move forwards and backwards until it's in focus. Once it's in focus, I'll uh, press the shutter and get the photo. And if I want to change my magnification, I'll either turn the focus ring, or I've got this little dial on my Olympus, which can change it to one to four. Um, now one to four sounds quite zoomed out, but if I have the Rainox on, it's actually equivalent to like somewhere in between one to one and one to two. All right, now on to the thing I kept on saying I'll talk about later, and that's the automatic bracketing mode. This is sort of following on from my focusing settings because it's a different sort of way of focusing. So I'll quickly show you how I set up automatic bracketing on my Olympus. So what you want to do is click menu and then on the second camera icon, uh, you'll have bracketing at the top of the menu. Click on that, click on to go across and you'll see these this A, E, Y, W, B, F, L, all that stuff. You want to ignore that, go straight to the bottom where it says focus bracket, turn that to on, and then you'll go into another menu, which says focus stacking. You can actually stack all the images in camera and this will turn out as a JPEG. As I said earlier, I shoot in raw. So for me, I have that off um, and my number of shots I've set to 999. Uh, that sounds like a lot, but what I do is when I hit the shutter button, it starts the automatic bracketing sequence. And then if I want to end it, all I've got to do is press the shutter button again. Then my focus differential I usually have on one or two. Two works most of the time. If I'm really magnified I might change it to one. Uh, for the 60 millimeter macro at one to one two works perfectly fine. If you want to be extra safe choose one because you'll have more frames to pick from. Yeah less risk of missing a shot. And then for charge time uh, depends on what flash you're using really. I use zero and it, my flash usually keeps up if I'm using a uh, low power on it. I sometimes use 0.2 seconds just to give my flash a bit of breathing time. But yeah, have an experiment around with that really. Uh, it depends what flash you've got. Also, another thing to mention is that not all flashes and lenses uh, are supported for this automatic bracketing. Now, when I was talking about shutter speed earlier, I said that I sometimes use 1 over 50. And this is because when using the automatic bracketing mode, it limits it to 1 over 50. And this is because I'm using electronic shutter. Um, that's the only way this mode works, you can't use mechanical shutter. And electronic shutter has a different sync speed compared to mechanical shutter. As I said earlier, I use one over 250 shutter speed. That's when using mechanical shutter. And when using electronic shutter, I have one over 50 shutter speed. So yeah, I think that's every single camera set covered really. 
If you have any questions about those camera settings I mentioned, just uh, leave a comment and I'll try my best to respond to that. But yeah, with all that said and done, uh, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, share, comment, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.